Hey everyone, welcome to another video. This one we're going to be painting the woodsman from us. So this is the first part of painting the woodsman, but the fifth part of the project. As if you watched the previous videos, we created the base for this model uh, first, which is quite unusual for me, but I think the base was a big part of the project, so we got that done. And now we're going to start painting the model itself. This part we're going to focus on the torso area. It's basically a skin tutorial, but we're also going to do the hair, the little earrings and the leather straps, everything that's kind of in that torso part. And in the other parts, we'll do the horns, the sword, the legs and everything else that goes with it. But most of this tutorial, we're going to spend doing the skin and then there'll just be some simple bits painting the other details and things. I hope this video is useful for painting any model with skin. It's surprising how many topless male miniatures with muscles there are in our hobby, but there you go. So hopefully this can help you paint a bunch of other models too. Mark Masklands pointed out to me a two-dimensional painter called Roberto Ferri. And I think Mark's one of the best at painting skin in our little miniature world. So if there's someone he points out, I think it's worth paying attention to. And you know what? I absolutely loved checking out this painter's work. What I enjoyed was how strong the shadows were. That kind of jump from the light straight into the shadow, which was quite severe, uh, but realistic. I decided this was what I wanted to go for the woodsman, actually not doing anything particularly interesting with the tones of the skin, quite plain and desaturated, but I wanted to do some severe shadows as if he was being lit in the woods, but it was quite a dark area, so there'll be some nice drops into the shadows on the figure. I thought this would work nicely with my backdrop because I have that quite strong light painted in the back, so I thought hopefully this would all come together and be a convincing, nice dramatic effect. A little disclaimer is that I was kind of experimenting and exploring things with this painting, so as opposed to a lot of tutorials where it's step one, two, three, there you go, unfortunately I completely changed some of the things I was doing halfway through, and I changed the paints I was using, so that doesn't make for a perfect tutorial. What I'm going to do is explain to you what I was trying, why I changed it, and when I'm doing the paint recipes or telling you what paint I'm using, I'm probably gonna just suggest what I should have used. You know, I switched some colors halfway out because they weren't working for me, so I'll try and make it easier to follow by just putting in the titles which paint I would do at this point. With that in mind, I thought we could talk about the paints I used first of all. And like I said, I was focusing on the lighting. And so the recipe didn't need to be complex. I wanted it to be simple. And I wanted actually a desaturated color to the skin, putting all that focus on the light. So you can see here, these are the paints I ended up using after a bit of experimentation. So these are what I would use to start with. So mostly GW paints. Uh, the main core of it is the Night Quest of Flesh, which I love as an addition to the range. Just that kind of nice, subtle uh, brown tone, nice and natural. I think it's dis more desaturated than Bugman's Glow, but I prefer using it. And then we've just got some Ivory and some Rhinox Hide for shade and light. So throughout this process, we're going to be using those four colours, and there's going to be lots of mixes in between. So the kind of darkest shadow colour in the end was Rhinox Hide with a little bit of the Night Quest of Flesh in there. And you can see it makes this natural pinky brown kind of colour. That colour I really like. I discovered that halfway through was a nice shadow tone, so that's why I'm telling you the colours now. Then you're also going to need some mixes of the Night Quest of Flesh and the Kislev Flesh. And as you can see, I think this makes, again, a quite nice natural tone. Adding the Night Quest of Flesh does desaturate and kill the colour, which I think is a good thing. You could use something like Cadian Flesh, which is a, a tone in between, but that's a very strong colour, and I do use that for glazes and things later on, but for layering up and building the highlights, I prefer these mixes in between. For the highlights, I'm just using Ivory, but any off-white is good, 
and I'm using a color like this again because it will desaturate the color and I want to do that on purpose. Uh, you could use pure white but I think just a little bit of an off-white is kind of useful but uh, yeah in this circumstance using pure white is fine just make sure you don't go up to a pure white. Always leave a little bit of kids left flesh in the tone and it will appear more natural I think. But that's basically the main recipe we're going to use for this and we can add some other little colours but this is what we need to do to paint the light. I decided to take some photos of the model with some natural light hitting it from the angle that I imagined and this would help to solidify my head how far I could push these shadows. You know I think it's really nice to have a reference photo to make sure you're doing the right thing. I knew I wanted to you know really have strong severe shadows on there but to help me make sure it had a level of realism I wanted to take these shots. And as you can see it's just got grey primer on and I'm kind of holding it near my window above my desk and you can see what shape the highlights are, how severe those shadows are and it's just really useful I think for your head and sort of going back to. I turned the model slightly in a few different shots to make sure I had the right level of shadow. I didn't want it to be too extreme so I slightly turned the angles to get something uh, kind of cool looking. But what I loved was how dark it was on one side of the face, the torso, sort of where the lats are, and under the pec, that big drop in shadow, and of course the back of the arm and the delts. And later on, as you can see, this was really important for checking back and making sure I had a realistic shape to the shadows. I used a grey primer simply because I haven't got any black anymore, and that's mostly due to the COVID stuff. It's... Uh, it was harder to order and no stores were open, but grey primer is absolutely great. I'm using Halford's grey primer, which is really good for the money and it sticks to resin so, so well. Actually, I think moving forward, I'm probably just going to use this primer. And what I did then was just airbrush it in some Rhinox Hide, which is actually a better kind of starting tone than black anyway. Pretty much everything on this, because we've got fur, we've got wood, Rhinox Hide is going to be an excellent colour to start. I then used some Tamiya Flat White as usual through the airbrush and I did a pre-highlight to try and replicate what I'd taken in the photos of the natural light. In retrospect I probably would have preferred to start from a pure Rhinox Hide uh, base coat, that's just how I prefer to work but it was really good to do this to take some more shots so I was kind of cementing the ideas by taking photos of the model in light and then taking photos of the pre-highlight that I'd done. And having both of these to look back on was super useful. Obviously with the Zenith or Prime with the Tamiya, the light was a little softer because I just covered a bit more of the model. So using them both was kind of cool that I could kind of pick uh, which would be more realistic or just work better for the model. The big difference was how much of the face was covered and I think I preferred it in my photos of the primer where one half of the face was very dark. I thought that was more dramatic and uh, moody so yeah I like that a lot. So at this point I airbrushed some skin over the pre-highlight and this is where like I was saying I, I wouldn't do this again. I made a mix of kids their flesh and burnt umber which going back to the recipe I've suggested I ditched the burnt umber in the end. Burnt umber is fantastic for skin but it didn't work out in this one. What I'd probably prefer to do here is just give it a spray with plain Nightquester flesh. Actually I don't love airbrushing things like skin because you know in the end it's hard to make corrections and uh, do changes so I'd rather just go in with a brushed on effect but if I'd airbrushed it with Nightquester flesh and then highlighted up from there that would have been cool I think. At the moment my preference is a bit old school but I like just starting with a dark base like Rhinox Hide and I would have liked to have just layered up with the brush starting with that mix of Rhinox Hide and Nightquester and then just built it up. It's a bit old school and some people don't like to paint like this but I love how it looks and I enjoy the process. So yeah, old school layering is where I'm at with my painting mostly at the moment. 
because this first coat was so pale, I tried to put some shadows back in. And this was actually with some Nightquester flesh and eventually some Rhinox hide. And this is where sort of the fighting began because I kind of, you know, got rid of my Zenith or highlight and it was just not a waste of time, but I think it would have been faster to just go straight in with a brush and try and replicate the lights uh, that were shown in the photos, I think. But yeah, it's absolutely fine to do it this way. I sometimes find airbrushing can make you lost and then you just try and follow the airbrushing highlights you've done. But actually, if you just block in the highlights by brush, it's a little bit clearer in your head, especially when you have volumes that you want to achieve that are so specific. And I could just copy that photo. So I think that would have been more precise and a little easier. So eventually I get to the brushwork and you can kind of see, especially on the deltoids that I've got too much dark color on there. And this is where I think, yeah, I should have just brushed it on. So I start to layer up using the Nightquest of Flesh and I'm trying to bridge the gap between these two tones, which like I said, is, was kind of a waste of time in the end. So this is where I think maybe spray it brown and then just dive in like I'm doing here and layer up that Night Quest of Flesh. Just block in those large areas and I think it will look great. I like to block in a few areas. Here I just did the hair with some German beige from Vallejo. I haven't used this color for ages actually and it's uh, really nice. And it just helps to kind of see where you're going. You know, when you've got some messy areas, it makes the whole thing kind of look messy. So yeah, just blocking in some parts like the hair and the straps can help you focus a little more on the skin, I think. So after what I felt was quite a bit of messing around, I actually start some highlighting, some painting. And this is a mix of Kislev Flesh and the Night Quester. And this is what I meant by you could just dive in and start layering. I kind of messed around with the airbrushing and eventually I'm, I'm just layering up these highlight areas anyway. But yeah, just build up nice and diluted, get smooth layers. And all you're looking to do here is pay attention to get those shapes of highlight right, just like those photo references that we took. And you can actually, you don't need to blend it or anything, you just need to block it in at this point, just to make sure that it works, that it looks right, and you can blend everything later on. But I do think in general when you're painting skin, if you just try and block out the areas of light and shadow to start with, that can save you some time, and you can clean everything up when you like. You can see here I've just got the photo on my phone and I'm just looking at those shapes of highlight and trying to block them in. And I really like working like this because, you know, you can be sure you're getting it right. I think that's a tricky thing. I'd probably be happy working without the photo because I have a good idea of, of how light works and what I want things to look like. But I think this is useful uh, definitely when you're learning. And for me, this was gonna be quite a dramatic effect with a very strong shadow. So I did want to make sure it did have that area of realism because I thought it would end up looking quite full on. But yeah, I think this is a lovely way to work, just blocking in those two main areas. And uh, once you've got to that point, then you can just fiddle around getting more highlights in, blending things together. But this is kind of the, the core of getting some nice looking skin with realistic light and shadows. So I just continue to layer up, adding a bit more of the Kislev flesh, and eventually I'll use pure Kislev flesh and then begin to add that ivory. Just keep looking at, again, the reference photo, and you don't need to kind of be extreme with every muscle. Actually, I do think when we have these sculptures with very extreme muscles, what we don't want to do is exaggerate them further with our paint. So try to paint very generally in first and you know focus on the overall light. And then you can add little highlights to pick out and separate the muscles later. But at first, just be really general and paint soft. And I think you'll get a more natural look in the end. For example, on this figure, there's quite a sharp angle when it changes from the cheek into the lip area. And I actually didn't sort of shadow that at all. I added some little highlights later on underneath the eye, but all this layering at the beginning, I just painted that as one piece and just tried to leave shadow at the bottom of the jawline. So you're trying to paint the head as a general shape uh, in the beginning 
and yeah, just pick out those separate parts later with the highlights. So you can see that here on the face where I just have that light going all the way across. But now I start to add a little bit of ivory and I do pick out the details, getting that line in, in the corner of the eye and then underneath by the cheek. And then I start to pick out a highlight on the forehead, just where the light's going to hit that area a little bit more. Again, I'm trying to make sure all the highlights are quite broad and soft and uh, yeah, not too detailed at this point. Then I'm taking this same tone and just building up the highlights on the top of the delts here. And then I'll also add that to the peck. I think they're a little small here, but you can see how subtle this uh, change in highlight color is. I'm just building it up gradually and also adding the ivory. You can see it's quite a desaturated color. Like I said, it's not too vibrant, but it is adding more light, which is kind of all I need at this point. If things end up being too desaturated, it's so easy to glaze and get some color back in there. So like I keep saying, my main concern is getting the volume correct and getting that shadow looking natural. Building up more highlights on the face, so I get that nice spherical shape highlight on the top of the chin here. I always enjoy doing that. You can see just that little highlight makes a real difference. And then we're building upon that highlight we did previously again just a little lighter now, trying to catch more light on that cheek, the top of the nose, just bringing out all those details on the face. And I'm gonna push the highlights more on the face, obviously to draw attention. And then quite a big highlight on the top of that forehead area. So here I've got a little halfway point photo just to see how it's looking. And you can see that the light and the shadow is coming together. It looks a bit like our referency photo, but everything's a little rough, but we'll carry on and we can smooth everything later. Like I said, don't worry about being smooth at the beginning. So we're just continuing. I'm not going to kind of bore you with loads and loads of footage of this, but I'm basically adding more ivory. And as you can see, I'm just progressing those highlights and I keep layering until I feel I've got enough light and sometimes I push the light too far because it's so easy to rein it back. But I know that my kind of final highlight color is going to be ivory with a little of the Kislev flesh in it just to keep some tone. So I'll probably push all the way to there and, and kind of see what it looks like. And you can see I'm using a small detail brush and just almost stippling to just build up that paint with a lot of control. And I think the thing with skin is you just need to be patient, which sounds super cliche and obvious, but at this point, mine looks quite rough and maybe you'll feel like that too and it's not going very well, but you need to persevere and you can work on smoothing it later on. So here it's starting to look okay. I think the deltoid looks fantastic compared to what we wanted it to look like and the shading's looking pretty good. But what I find is the Rhinox Hide, which is the shadow at the moment, is maybe a little too severe, especially around this half of the face. I think that, you know, in a, in a photo it probably works, but in the hand, it just kind of looks unpainted. So what I'm going to do is slightly change the plan and highlight it, but softly. So it's still gonna be much darker than the rest, but not as dark as this pure Rhinox hide you can see in kind of the corners here. Actually, I think those mixes of Night Quester and Rhinox Hyde are gonna be a little more natural looking and I think that'll look good in photos and in hand. So here you can see I'm just highlighting this part of the face and again, it was Rhinox Hyde and now I'm just doing it Rhinox Hyde with a little bit of the Night Quester. So all we're doing is slightly softening it, making it still a shadow, but less extreme. I think the thing is, in the photos, it kind of fades to black and you can't see any of the detail. But in real life, you can see, even if it's plain Rhinox Hyde, you can still make out the sort of volumes of the cheek and the lip. So it kind of just looks weird that it's unpainted at all. So I think what you need to do is highlight it just hardly at all. So a few highlights to appear that you've, you've treated it and you've thought about it. Uh, but you're still making it much darker than that light side. So this is again what I was saying at the beginning of the video that I kind of was learning things and I changed things halfway through. So I'm just trying to 
uh, explain it in the best way that you can follow it yourself. I'm doing the same thing on this left peck here. Luckily we've kind of got that hair which separates the light to the, the shadow part, but I still need to lighten up that peck a little bit so it's not as a severe separation. So again, just those mixes of the Nightquester and Rhinox. I also, while I have these tones on the palette, just quickly uh, put a base coat on the severed head. I actually painted the severed head very quickly and I really didn't like what I did. So I'll probably repaint that from scratch in part two. I just, just did it too fast and it looks terrible. So in my original idea, I was just gonna have this very dark shadow, just like Roberto Ferri's artwork, but I thought it was a little bit empty feeling and I had all this strong green and, and moss around the figure. So I thought I'm gonna have a go at putting a little bit of some environmental light in here on the muscles. So I want to add a little bit of subtle green that's kind of catching the shadows where it's bouncing off the moss. So for this, I just took some Vallejo olive green and I added it with my Nightquester Rhinox mix to desaturate the green a little. And I just tried to paint it on the shadow and I kept turning the model back to where I thought I was gonna photograph it from to make sure you could just see the green, but it felt natural and it was in the right area. It's quite tricky to do, but just do it with nice thin paint and you can always erase it if you don't like it but just build it up and gradually make it a bigger and bigger highlight until you think it's uh, covering the right area. And always check back to the front to make sure you can see it, but it's not too overbearing. But you can see what a difference it makes as I turn it and you can see on the deltoid, just it drops into the shadow and then you get a little green tone and I think that looks really cool. And hopefully when it's all together on the base, it all makes sense and uh, yeah, just looks cool, right? I really like how it's looking and I get a bit more confident. So I add a little more olive green and just start to push that green tone a little more. So I'm sort of transitioning it now and I'm painting a smaller area with a stronger green. And I start to add it to other parts like the underside of the pec and the serratus on the side of the torso. At this point, I'm really starting to dig this figure because we have those strong shadows, but we changed it and we have nice highlights on them. We're adding a bit of environmental light and I think the highlights are looking good. So yeah, I'm kind of pleased of where it's going at this point. I think it's interesting. I think it's dramatic and I'm happy that we've kept a relatively desaturated tone for this. So everything's quite bright in terms of uh, values, but we're not using super vibrant colors. While I'm here and I have green on the palette, I just start to add it to the underside of things like the sword, the horns, just anywhere I think later is probably going to have that environmental light. But in the videos where we cover the horns and sword in detail, I'll probably go over that. But I think it's just good to block in that green where you think it's going to catch. So I'm feeling good about the front, but now we have to turn our attention to the back. And you remember earlier I said we need to paint skin in more general terms sometimes rather than picking out the individual muscles. And I think for the back, this is even more important because where it arches and curves under, I think all of that lower mid part of the back should be really in shadow. And we should just focus on bringing the shoulders and upper part of the torso into light. So earlier, while I was doing the front, I sort of sketched out the back a bit the shadow color was the Rhinox Hyde bit of Nightquester, and I had a kind of um, Nightquester and Kislev mix on the top. But now what I needed to do was just layer up from the shadow and try and bridge that gap in between. So do whatever your preferred method is to try and blend these together, but just try to not pick out any individual muscles and think about getting light on the top and then shadow as the angle changes into the back curving and facing downwards. Eventually I get those roughly blended together and then I can start to progress the highlights a little further. So here I'm just layering up the Kislev flesh and this is exactly the same as we did on the front. So I'm not gonna go over it too much, but like I said, we are just covering the big areas of the muscle, trying to catch the top of the shoulders and just build that really strong uh, contrast of light and dark. Once you're at pure Kislev flesh, 
we can add the ivory just like before and I think at this point is where you can start to pick out individual muscle volumes. So you can see here I'm building the highlight to the top of the muscle and then I'm leaving a shadow on the one above. I try to connect these muscles so they flow together and you don't have sort of stark lines everywhere but yeah just like you can see here I'm just adding highlights to the top of each muscle. But because I've worked quite generally first of all this appears natural and we're just picking out those individual parts now. I think it's difficult to learn the balance of keeping things natural looking and defining the muscles enough. So you can see on the top of the shoulder here I start to pick out individual parts of the muscle but because I've built up to Kislev flesh and now I'm just doing a subtle highlight with the ivory included I can kind of build it up slowly and make sure I don't go too over the top with exaggerating each muscle individually. There's a real balance of having impact and making models look impressive whilst remaining having that kind of natural look. I think that's particularly tough with uh, skin. So having a look at the back here, I'm actually really happy. Uh, that shoulder area is in the light and then it just drops into the shadow. And this is quite a sketchy look, I guess, but this is what I was going for uh, with this model. But you can see we've picked out some of the individual muscles, but in general, it really drops into the shadow on the lower back. And we could blend this up and make it smoother if you want. It's all about the look that you want to achieve. But I think, yeah, for me, I'm satisfied with that. And then turning to the front, I really like where this is heading. We've got really strong light, but those shadows are looking cool as well. And I'm just gonna carry on with the forearm here and just try and blend and make sure it works as you turn the model. I thought I would start to pick out some of the details because then you get a better view of how well you've done on the skin. So I start with these leather straps and after a Rhinox hide base coat, I give it a highlight with some brown leather from Scale 75. Really nice matte paint perfect for leather straps and things like that. I then add some light brown from Vallejo and now I try to highlight uh, parts of the strap that are kind of in the light. So when you paint these details, all your light source needs to follow the same thing as the skin. So the strap isn't gonna get a lot of light because it's a dull material, but I still need it to be paler uh, where it matches on the skin. I start to add texture and detail and I use some light brown and then some light brown and ivory in the areas that are really in the light. So I'm doing two things here because I'm catching the top, sort of defining it with like an edge highlight, but I'm also adding a little bit of texture by just some random kind of scratchy lines and things like that to separate the texture from the skin, which is quite smooth, but also painted with a little bit of stippling. So it's dots and on this leather, we've got a few lines. To make sure the shadow side of the strap is in shadow, I glaze it with some Rhinox hide, some brown leather. So you can just darken up that side as well and make sure that you have the right amount of contrast on the strap. Again, so it matches with your lighting on the skin. So we're gonna start the hair now, which is really important because it's around the face and it goes across all our highlighted areas. So the hair has to match with these highlights and shadows. I base coated it with that German beige earlier, and now I'm just gonna add in some pale sand. It kind of doesn't matter too much the highlight color you use here. You could just use your ivory as well. And I just block in the entire area of hair a little bit lighter. I'm choosing not to pick out the hairs individually too much. My main concern is that it's painted again in general, and the light's gonna follow that. And that's a stylistic choice. If you want to pick out the hairs individually, then go for it. But I'm happy to just block in these big areas of hair. So now with pale sand, I do pick out the hairs individually, but the contrast isn't massive. So I'm not having a really deep, severe shadow between each hair strand, essentially, because I think it will jar the look. I'm more concerned of having shadow where that side of the head isn't in the light but I do pick out the hairs a little bit. It's all about finding that balance between defining each part and making sure your general lighting works. You can see on the side of the head here, it's just left in shadow. 
and I probably need to detail it a bit later on, but the important thing is that this whole area is darker in general, matching the face shadow. I do add some pure ivory highlights to really push the light, and on the top of the head, I'm really not picking out the hairs too much at all. I just want it to be like the light is bleaching out all the detail, where it's just hitting every part of the head. Now I start to detail the shadow area and I give it a little wash of Gobi Brown because my German beige wasn't quite dark enough. I want the German beige to be the highlight for this part rather than the base coat. So I need to drop the shadow parts down. After that wash is dried, just pick out the hairs with German beige and that is enough for the shadow part of the hair. So I want to show you now a simple recipe for doing any kind of turquoisey gems and it's so good for any kind of thing like this. I use this combo all the time. So we're gonna use scale 75 despair green for the shadow, scale 75 Caribbean blue for the midtone, and then pastel yellow, which is key to add to the Caribbean blue for the highlights. Now these colors are really vivid and really strong and you can just get loads of contrast from these. You can see the despair green is very translucent but when it's built up it's so dark and this is a very very saturated dark blue green and I really recommend picking it out. If you add Caribbean blue to it then you can get some lovely mid-tones and really strong turquoises. There's not really any colors like this despair green that I've found so I do recommend giving it a go. When you try it you'll see what I mean. It's just really powerful and translucent and it's got a whole bunch of uses, I think. For the highlights, adding yellow rather than white gives it a slightly more greenish hue. You can see here, it's just very powerful, exaggerates that kind of green element of the turquoise. And yeah, if you want your highlights to show up, these two together work really, really nicely. If you add too much yellow, then of course it will look a bit yellow, but I think you can get enough contrast uh, with this tone here. So I base coat the gems with Despair Green, which is super dark, and I just give a, a little bit of a highlight with some Caribbean Blue added. Just a little bit for a sort of soft first big highlight. So you can see on the center gem, I've highlighted that with Caribbean Blue, and then we're gonna do that now to the others. So I sort of do one main highlight following the light side, and then just a little secondary light looping underneath. Then we just add our pastel or ice yellow and add really small highlights to the top. Quite tricky, but worth it. Just get that nice, bright, vibrant color. And this is the brightest color we've used so far, so it's really gonna stand out. But I think for a small detail, that's kind of nice. You can finish this off with a pure white dot if you wish, or you might just like leaving it with the uh, vibrant blue. It's up to you, really. I want a little bit of this blue to catch the parts around it, so mix up your highlight colour with a little bit of the hair colour and just try and get the right balance of subtle colour where it hits the hair around it. You don't want to go overboard with this, but it's really nice when you have these subtle inclusions of colour. I paint just a tiny bit of this blue on the cheek. It's not going to go very far, but I think just adding these little details are really nice when people find these. I've done the same around the chest with just a little bit of the light skin color and the blue and this is actually one of my favorite parts. Again, I think the more subtle the better here but it just shows that you've thought about it which always brings your miniatures up to another level. So I think that's the torso kind of done for now. One thing you'll notice is there'll be little changes between sort of video clips and all I'm doing really is blending and smoothing and that's just done with more of the steps we've shown. So I'll just use those mixes we made on the palette and keep trying to blend and, and bridge the gaps. This video isn't really about blending. We've obviously got videos where we've done blending before. Really, I wanted to focus on getting some interesting light into the models. And I wanted to focus on simple technique because we just used layering and I wanted to use an easy to follow recipe with just those four paints and everything was focused on light. 
And for me, I was trying to push myself with how strong uh, the shadows were, so I needed to use a simple recipe. And that meant I wasn't trying to do a million things at once, I was just trying to practice this one extra thing. Take your time to blend and smooth everything as you see fit. I actually think it can look nice, a bit more sketchy and, uh, you know, artistic. I think that's a really nice look, which is kind of what I'm heading for with mine. But I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. I'm really loving adding those little environmental lights, the little bit of green, a little bit of blue catching around the earrings and the gems. That was really fun. It's actually really easy. You've just got to think about it and do it. But I just think it adds so much to the miniature. I'd really love to know what you thought about this video. We didn't do loads of the process in depth, I think, but it's still like a 35 minute video. I'm trying to make them concise enough so they're not too boring for you but all the information's there so just you know give me some feedback and let me know how you feel about the level of information I'm putting into these videos. On this miniature I do believe once you've done the skin you're kind of on easy street. If you can do the skin well you've just got to match up that light with the other details and it's going to be faster to do the details and a little bit more forgiving. In the next part we'll do the horns which are both made of wood and obviously the kind of antler horns and we'll be doing the sword and the legs and, and just finishing up the miniature really. I'm really excited to get this model done and on that fantastic base that we've created and I hope when it's all together it's going to be one of my favourite projects. Depending on when you're watching this video, I can't wait to see people paint this miniature so make sure you tag us in it. Uh, at Cult of Paint and yeah we're just super excited to see people paint one of our favourite figures we've produced so I hope this video has helped you to you know get some confidence in painting this model and maybe some other models too so let us know and we'll see you in part two so until then have fun painting your muscular naked men <laughs>